Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Skinny Guy Savior. I'm Vince Del Monte, and the purpose of this show is to take your most pressing question and answer it in approximately one minute. Sometimes I don't respect the clock and go a little longer, and we got three questions here on a similar topic that we're gonna address right now, and it's on nutrient and macro timing. Traditional bodybuilding theory says that macro and meal timing is critical to put on muscle, now these intermittent fasting zealots are saying getting macros for, day, for the day is all that matters. What do you think is optimal meal frequency and timing for most muscle gains? So to answer your question, we're looking for at least four to five, five to six um, doses of protein per day to stimulate muscle protein synthesis optimally. Okay, and let me explain why, because there's plenty of research that supports what I just said. A lot of this I recently had confirmed from a good friend, Lane Norton, who uh, has studied protein metabolism, amino acid metabolism, and, and uh, looks at the thresholds that are required for our body to stimulate new muscle tissue. And what we know is that your body typically needs around a gram, it's range. I mean, you, if you look at 50 different studies, you'll find 50 different answers. And they all range between 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight to up to 1.4. Um, Dosage is higher than that, from what I know, haven't been looked at very closely. So what I teach my clients is the um, power of one. One gram of protein per pound of body weight is a great starting point, then we can go from there. What we also know is, in terms of amino acid thresholds, is that your body needs about three to four grams of, um, uh, of the amino acid leucine to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Okay, this is basically the creation of new muscle tissue. This is known as muscle anabolism. So the reason bodybuilders eat on a regular meal cadence every, three to, every two to three, three to four hours is because they know the importance of stimulating new muscle tissue. All right. Now, a lot of these people are saying, well, it doesn't matter uh, as long as you hit your macros, that's all you need to do. And that's partially true. And it's true from a standpoint that you will be in an overall positive, you will experience overall positive nitrogen retention, but it's not the same as optimal muscle anabolism. They're two different things. Okay. So if you're just looking to lose weight, you're just looking to lose fat, and stimulating uh, protein synthesis is, might not be as important for you, but bodybuilders who need to gain size, maximize muscularity, especially people who have a hard time gaining muscle in, a fir- in the first place, are gonna benefit from eating more meals in the day, stimulating protein synthesis with a, real, with a more regular meal cadence. And uh, the most interesting thing that we learned um, from a lot of the research that Lane Norton has done and his lab has done is that every meal has what's known as an anabolic cap. What that means is that um, you can't make up for protein synthesis by having a large protein meal at the end of the day or any time in the day and then eating a small amount of protein other times of the day. And this is actually pretty much, this is pretty much how North Americans eat low protein breakfast, low protein lunch, high protein dinner, and the only time they're stimulating protein synthesis is in that high protein dinner where they're getting about 30 to 45 grams of protein, which uh, makes available about three to four grams of leucine. So it's very important to understand that you can't make up a lack of protein synthesis earlier on in the day because you were intermittent fasting or you're missing meals by just um, overdosing later on in the day by having a massive steak. Well, I miss my, you know, I, I have to have 200 grams of protein a day, so uh, I had 100 already and I miss, uh, and I need another 100, so I'm just gonna have a huge steak tonight and I'll be fine. No, you won't. Um, if it's a, it's a regular habit over a long period of time, obviously if it happens here or there, you know, you're gonna be fine, but if it's a consistent habit, then I guarantee you, you're not gonna maximize your muscle potential. And this is why I guarantee you, you will never see a guy doing intermittent fasting or a guy who's missing meals end up on stage and start winning pro bodybuilding shows or even natural bodybuilding shows. They will be the exception. There may be a few of them who are genetic freaks, which does, and you know, those guys, it doesn't matter what they do, but for the majority of us regular guys, of us normal guys who have a hard time building muscle, 
it's not an optimal way of going about maximizing muscularity and getting big. I hope that helps and uh, we'll move on to a couple similar questions that uh, fall under this similar category, all right? A quick question here from Cody. He says, is it possible to improve body composition while only eating two meals a day? I'm studying in Spain and the, uh, I only eat, and they only eat lunch and dinner. I try to make uh, lunch protein and carbs and dinner protein and fat. As long as my macros are satisfied, do I have anything to worry about? My main carb sources are beans, veggies, and fats and are from whole eggs, olive oil and nuts. Thanks Vince, you're a great inspiration. So Cody, I just, again, I guess uh, I answered that question already. From a body composition standpoint, you will, you can definitely sustain a certain weight, but without the stimulus of weight training and without a more regular meal cadence, it'll be more challenging. It's not impossible. Uh, it's certainly going to be more challenging than somebody who is getting regular um, doses of protein throughout the day. Next question goes to, uh, again, of, of a similar nature. Hector, Hector wants to know, when is the best time to take your post-workout protein? Immediately after or one hour later? I've heard a lot of different opinions, but I want to know what works best. Hector, this is very easy. If you worked hard enough during your workout, you will know that you need to replenish right after the workout. After all my hard workouts, I'm starving. I'm always ready to eat uh, almost immediately after my workout. I always start off with li liquid nutrition and then about an hour later, I move into whole food nutrition. So I, I don't see any reason why you would delay. Uh, even though weight training, you're not burning through a lot of glycogen, you still beat up a lot of muscle tissue, you broke things down. So in my mind, you know, Am I, wearing, am, I, am, I, am I taking it within the last second of the rep? Sometimes I actually do when I'm getting ready for contests and I'm cutting, uh, I, I don't waste any time. I don't see why would I? Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm not panicking if I get it 15 minutes after my workout or 30 minutes after my workout, I just get it in. Usually I bring my protein powder to the gym so I have it on the way home in the car. So I keep it, um, you know, that's the principle to have it after the workout but I don't, you know, freak out on exactly what minute it happens, all right? I think there's one more question here we'll grab. This is from Kevin Opa, Obdama. He says, hey Vince, I really wanna know what's the best naturally post, natural post-workout food. I was thinking about fruits, um, VNGS, I'm not sure what that is, maybe uh, vegetables, uh, and pasta because of the quantity of carbs. I uh, read so much about it that I'm kind of confused what to eat. Um, what to eat. Great question. So Kevin, if you're not going to use protein powder, uh, one thing that you could do, and this was a meal that I relied on during my first transformation about 10 years ago when I gained 40 pounds of muscle my first six months. And this uh, meal was awesome. It tasted amazing. And what I did was I, I got one cup of Vector cereal, uh, two large bananas, and an entire container of cottage cheese. And that was my typical post-workout meal uh, when I wasn't using protein shakes or um, carb powders, etc. So try that one out. Uh, that's a great post-workout meal. I'd love to hear your feedback. What are some of your favorite post-workout meals? Post them below and that way we can get a great conversation going. Do you use liquid nutrition, whole food nutrition? What's one of your favorite meals that has really helped you recover and gain some good lean muscle mass? Let me know below. Let the other members here know and um, I look forward to doing this again. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the videos. I'm going to start uploading these on a more regular basis and always stay connected through my Facebook fan page. That's where we do a lot of contests and uh, free giveaways, things that I don't announce here on YouTube. So you don't miss a thing and you're always connected, head on over to my fan page and that's also where you can post questions. I guarantee that you'll always get a reply. That's my promise over at my fan page. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon.